anointing. And everyone will be blessed in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for our Bible study. We bless your name because you brought us together. Thank you for all your children who are here, for children in all the locations where we're having the Bible study together. We're asking, Lord, you reach out to everyone and show us the greatness and the glory of the name of Jesus so that, Lord, we'll know that this name is all in all for every one of us in Jesus' name. Help us to have the right response to your word so that the benefit of the word will come to every one of us. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. And everybody said, yeah. Amen. We come to chapter 3 of Acts of the Apostles as we're studying our Bible. As you understand, we've already studied from chapters 1 and 2. And there are some verses in chapter 2, the concluding verses, you want to look at because uh, they form a very good connection with chapter 3. I'm looking at here from chapter 2, verse 41. Then they that Galilee received his word were baptized. And the same day, that's the day of Pentecost, when these uh, apostles and disciples received the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. And that same day, when, Paul, when Peter preached the word of God, it says that same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Something happened after that. All these people that came to know the Lord, they now continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. And then it says, in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Verses 43 and 44 says, And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Many wonders and signs done by the apostles. And it says in verse 44, All that believed, they were together, and they had all things common. When it says in verse 43, many wonders and signs were done by the apostles, it doesn't give us how they did it. It doesn't give us the, spec the particular miracles that actually happened. As we come to chapter 3, chapter 3 now tells us how those things happened. And it singles out a particular event, and then we'll see, now we'll come to chapter 3. It says in chapter 3, verse 1, now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour and they were told about this a man who had been paralyzed in fact he was lame from birth and then you look at verse 6 it says then peter said silver and gold have i none but such as i have i give unto thee in the name of jesus christ of nazareth rise up and walk what happened he rose up and he walked the apostles and disciples who were recently baptized in the Holy Ghost made a new discovery. They discovered that the name of Jesus, that the Jesus who was crucified, the Jesus who died, the Jesus who was buried, that same Jesus of Nazareth that the Jews rejected, but heaven glorified. He became exalted. He became glorified after he ascended into heaven. Now that name has equal power, equal authority, or the power and authority that Jesus exercised and manifested when he was here on earth. And the name of Jesus in their mouth became the exalted name. That name of Jesus, as these faith baptized people mentioned that name, became a glorified name, a mighty name, a powerful name, the conquering name, the wonderful name, the great name of Jesus. They discovered something that as they mentioned the name of Jesus, that name became recognized in heaven and recognized on earth. Is the name that saves, the name that transforms, the name that changes sinners, and the name that heals the sick, the name that even raises the dead. Is the name by that name they could cast out devils, they delivered the oppressed, and they moved mountains and overcame Satan, and they produced every desirable, remarkable miracle. And that's what we're learning today that there's power in this name. That's why we titled the whole chapter, The Supernatural Power in Jesus' Name. As you have this name, this power will work in your life. And any mountain to be moved away will move away in Jesus' name. You see the name of Jesus in the heart of the believer. The name of Jesus in the mouth of every true believer works miracles. You will not lose yours in Jesus' name. 
God is a miracle worker. Nobody will read the Bible and doubt that. As you go from, even from the first page of the Bible, when God said, let there be, let there be, those three words brought everything into existence. And then you come to other parts of Genesis, and you find that God is a miracle worker. And the children of Israel sang after they came out of the Red Sea. They were singing of the glorious power of the Lord. And as we go through all the books of the Old Testament, it tells us how mightily God worked. And nobody will doubt that God is a miracle worker. In fact, when you come to the New Testament, Jesus Christ tells us about this attribute of God. This characteristics of God. And he tells us that with God all things are possible. And then the angel told them, Mary, with God nothing shall be impossible. I want to remind you that in your life, all things are possible. Yeah. When you allow God to work in your life, you'll find that and if all this is bringing concern in your heart. How about this? How about this? How about that? God says, I am God. I change not. You'll find that miracle power working in your life even from this day in Jesus' name. And think about Jesus. His conception was a miracle. His birth was a miracle. His life was a miracle. His ministry was a miracle ministry. He's calling the apostles and then passing over, passing on the power unto them. He transformed their lives. Everything he did was miraculous. And then he was betrayed. He died. He was buried. And then he rose again. That resurrection was a miracle. And 40 days he appeared to his own disciples. And all those 40 days with him valuable proof that it is myself and then he even continued performing miracles after his resurrection you remember he met his own disciples right there at the show children do you have any bread no they had not they had told all the night and they caught nothing but risen Christ glorified Christ exalted Christ said throw your net there and they caught a multitude I just assured that with this name you'll catch a multitude great things will happen in your life in Jesus name and then we find that his supernatural name has, has been given to all believers in all generations to work miracles and to lead sinners to the Lord as Lord and Savior. There are some theologians, there are some preachers, they say they believe the Bible, they even say they are fundamentalists of the word of God. And yet they say no miracles today, that there's no power for miracles today. How about the name of Jesus? That name will never lose its power. And faith in the name of Jesus will always do wonders in our lives in Jesus' name. Look at verse 16, chapter 3, verse 16. It says, and his name, the name that never fails. And his name, the name that is ever powerful here on earth and in heaven through, through faith in his name has made this man strong whom ye see and know ye the faith which is by him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. The name of Jesus leads every believer to the realm of the supernatural. I'm praying for you. I'm believing that as you study the word of God, and then you take everything as the word of God reveals, you'll come out of being an ordinary Christian. You'll become extraordinary. In the name of the Lord, you will do exploits in Jesus' name. And you see, this belongs to the people that know the Lord. They know the word of God. They know the power of the Lord. They know the power. In the name of Jesus, we are told in Daniel chapter 11. Daniel chapter 11. There are people that maybe they study the history of the Bible, the language of the Bible. They study the uh, semantics of the Bible, the theology of the Bible. But they do not study to know the God of the Bible and to know by personal experience but the Lord is telling us in Daniel chapter 11, verse 32, it says, And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God, the people that do know their God, the people that do know their God shall be strong. And what will happen? And do exploits. I'm talking about you. You'll know God more as you come to these Bible studies. And the more you know of God and know of Christ and know of the Holy Ghost living inside you. And then you have this powerful, mighty name of Jesus. You too, you will do exploits in Jesus' name. We're looking at this chapter and we're dividing the chapter to three parts. Point, point one, the prevailing power of his wonder walking in. This is a name that works wonders. Take the name of Jesus with you. And everywhere you go, you'll find this name will work wonders in your life in Jesus' name. 
Well, you're all alone by yourself. The pastor is not there. The preacher is not there. A prayer partner is not there. Just mention that name and a wonder will happen in your life in Jesus' name. Point number two, the passionate plea in his wonderful name. As uh, the, this man was healed, then the people ran together. They were surprised because they knew the man. He had been there by the gate for such a long time. And when the name of Jesus raised up the man, he just he was not just walking. He was leaping and jumping, and he was so happy. He held on to the apostles, and then... But Peter, the apostle, used that to now plead with the people to now have this power, have the salvation in the name of Jesus by themselves. That's why we have the passionate plea in his wonderful name. And that brings everything to the conclusion. In chapter 3, it now goes back to what Jesus had said. That when those miracles happened, and when those stupendous and miraculous and supernatural things begin to happen, they remember to tell the people about repentance. And so we have point number three, the prescribed preaching, prescribed by the Lord, ordained by the Lord, commanded by the Lord, commissioned by the Lord, the kind of preaching the Lord has told them to preach concerning that name, the, preserved, the prescribed preaching in his worthy name. Let's come to number one. Number one, the prevailing power in his, of his wonder-walking name. This name has power. I said this name has power. And this power will work in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. We're coming to chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 1. It says, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the night hour. You see, the Jewish people, they had three times of praying. They thought at uh, the, the ninth, at uh, the sixth hour, or to see as the ninth hour, and then the other hours that they had. And the ninth hour here is nine after six in the morning. After six, they, they begin to count their own hours by six in the morning. The third hour will be nine o'clock. The sixth hour will be twelve o'clock, and the ninth hour will be three o'clock in the afternoon. Naturally, you'll find that a, a devoted Jew, a committed Jew, will pray three times in the day. They will never miss that. Uh, they, they always add their prayers those three times in the day. And the apostles are kept to that habit too, praying those three times in the day. We're looking at the Psalms. We're looking at uh, Psalm 55 and verse 17. Psalm 55 verse 17, it says, evening and morning and at noon. You see that? One, two, three. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. And if you do like David, hear the voice of David is not in respect of persons, he will hear your prayers to in Jesus' name. We're told about Daniel, that Daniel also kept the hour of prayer. He prayed every time. Even when there were people, detractors and, insinu and insinuating people, he still kept on that kind of prayer. And if when you make up your mind, you make up your mind, you are going to read your Bible every morning, and you keep to that. You make up your mind, you are going to pray at this time regularly, and you keep up to that, the Lord is going to honor your commitment in Jesus' name. And that's why this miracle happened. What if these apostles said, oh, it's the hour of prayer, but we are apostles, we are leaders, and we are pastors over the church. We don't have anything to do with that regular thing. Let all the members go and do that. But it's because these apostles observed that same regularity with all the other members. That's why this happened. Look at Daniel chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 10. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being opened in his chambers toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees. How many times? Three times a day. Three times a day. Uh, that's how the Jewish Jewish people, that's how they observe that. And they always kept that regular. And in the case of Daniel, a writing had been signed. If anybody prayed to God within these 30 days, this is what they will do. They'll throw him to lions them. Lion or no lion. Threatening or no threatening. Persecution or no persecution. Problem or no problem. They kept to that hour of prayer. No wonder the power of God was with them. And no wonder the power of God is going to be with you. And he prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did a four time. As he did a four time. Come back to you. Acts of the Apostles chapter 3. And so Peter and John went at this hour of prayer. 
And it says in verse 2, And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, and was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask arms of them that entered into the temple, who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple as an arms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him, with John said, Look on us. You see, as uh, they were going into the temple, they went through that beautiful gate. That beautiful gate was a wide gate. Would you, would you think of a gate 60 meters long and 75 meters high? Very, very high and very wide. They had a lot of gates going to that temple. But this particular one was the widest and the highest. And then they decorated it with gold and you know, very rich uh, things. And history tells us that it will take about 20 people to even try to hold the gate and close the gate or open on the gate. That's how heavy it was. That's how costly it was. And this man was always carried there because he felt the people that carried him there felt that, you know, those who are going to return were generous. The Jews in particular, don't you remember the prayer of the, of the Pharisees? The Pharisees said, I do this, I do this, and you know, they were in the habit of giving things to the beggars. And so when Peter and John got there, this beggar, because that was his habit, that was his trade, that was what he did every time. He said, I'm, I'm getting something here today. Look at these people. As I look at them, looks like they ought to have something. And then Peter said, look on us. Look on us. He was trying to divert his attention one from them, from himself, divert his attention from all the other people that were walking in. Look on us. And then he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. And number one, it's very good when you have expectation, expectation, and your expectation shall not be disappointed in Jesus' name. But you know, if something happened here, he got more than what he expected. You'll get more than what you expect. He was expecting money, he got miracle. Expecting money, he got miracle. He was expecting something temporary, he got something permanent. That's why I'm telling you that as your expectation is high before the Lord, it's going to go beyond what you are looking for. It's going to grant much more than your expectation in Jesus' name. And then in verse 6, Peter said, Silver and gold have I none. What do you mean? Silver and gold have I none. Do you remember what uh, the believers did? They all brought their money. They sold their houses. And they brought the money to the apostles' feet. And they laid the money there. But there's something beautiful, wonderful here. Those apostles did not have any kind of personal hold on the money of the church. You see, it's different from the bishops and the overseers and the pastors and the leaders today. You know, they say that the tithes are meant to be paid to them. And all the offerings coming into the church, they say that it's supposed to be the after all. They are the people laboring at the altar. But in the case of the apostles, they didn't touch the money. That's why it says, even though they bring the money, we are just representatives of the Lord. What Whatever they are bringing to us, they are not giving us personally. It doesn't belong to us. It belongs to the church. That's why it says silver and gold are by none. And what a wonderful thing if we follow the pattern of the New Testament church. That whatever is coming to the church belongs to the church. To do the work of the Lord. It's not the personal property of any pastor, any overseer, or any kind of leader. And when we give to God what belongs to God, God has a way of blessing us back. He'll bless you in Jesus' name. Then he said, silver and gold are by none. But he didn't stop there. You know, there are some people, they, stay, they, they stop just right there. Then pass on. If you don't have silver and gold, I'm looking for silver and gold. I'm, I go, you see my condition. I'm lame. I'm paralyzed. I've been born this way. And then you see, I've been there every time. And this is how they carry me here. Silver and gold, you have not them pass on. Well, don't, don't dismiss the man of God like that because something better, something greater, something higher is coming upon your life in Jesus' name. And then you said, but such as I have. What a wonderful thing. Such as I have, give I unto thee. Many years ago, actually many centuries ago, there was um, a particular pope, and it's a true story, and uh, this uh, man of God came in to see the pope, and uh, you, they had collected money offering, and the pope was, you know, part of, he was uh, looking at uh, the money, a pile of uh, currencies, and then as he looked at, I think it was St. Augustine, he said, Augustine, look at this. 
we can no more say with a Peter, say than gold that buy none, because now the church is rich and we uh, priests and all that, we have all this. And then Augustine replied, Yes, uh, your lordship, Pope, neither can we say in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. They became rich in currency and in material things, but poor spiritually. I pray that you will still keep following after the example of the apostles in Jesus' name. That even though we don't have silver and gold, we have something greater than silver and gold. We have something greater than money. In the name of Jesus Christ, that name was mighty and powerful in your mouth in Jesus' name. In verse 7, and he took him by the right hand and he lifted him up. And immediately, everybody say immediately. That's how your miracle will come. That's how the power of God will come in your life in Jesus' name. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength, and he, leaping up, stood. Hold on. Remember, this uh, man was born in this condition. And you know how long it took you. You were even born normal, and everything was all right. But you know, it took you to begin to crawl and begin to walk before you were able to quicken your steps. A long time, learning how to walk. But this man, this is miracle. I said, this is miracle, that immediately, he just he, he, he said he was leaping up, and then he stood, and he walked, and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God, because all his sorrow was gone. He didn't even remember the silver and the gold anymore, the greater, something greater has happened unto him. And when this greater thing comes upon your life, even from tonight, you'll forget all the little, little pennies you are looking for because, you know, you're looking for pennies, but God is going to give something high, as high as the heavens in Jesus' name. You know, somebody said he was looking for arms, but God gave him legs. Looking for arms, but God gave him legs. And now he could jump and run and do whatever. He said, this is life. This is freedom. You're talking about supernatural freedom. This is it. Supernatural deliverance, this is it. You talk about a person having wholeness and freedom and total liberty and liberation. This is it. And God has not changed. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What he did in this gone by is able to do today. In verse 10, and he knew that it was he which sat for arms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And let, let's see that this name, you know, it didn't just stop there in chapter 3, all through the book of Acts, this name kept on walking. And we have been experiencing the power of this name. If you have not been there with us, you ought to be there. The third week of the month, we started in December, in a little way, and then January, and then February, and then March, and then this April, something happened. I said, something happened. I pray you will have your share in Jesus' name. But you know, it didn't stop me in chapter 3. Some people say, oh, I'm sorry I missed that one. I wish I were there. Just come on the next time. Because chapter 4, we're told about the name. Chapter 5, we're told about the power in the name. And then we go on. Every month of this year, something new will be happening. The name of Jesus turning people's lives around and changing families and uniting husband and wife and giving children to the barren, giving job to the jobless and making all the promises you have read about before from Old Testament to the New Testament, God collecting everything together every third week of the month as we go on this year, this year is going to be a year of revival. A year of signs and wonders, a year of the miraculous in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. If you have never seen miracle, naked miracle with your own naked eyes, this is the year for you. You will see in Jesus' name. Because we're talking about the Jesus that will never lose any battle, about the Jesus that his power is beyond measure. Look at this, chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 8. In chapter 4, verse 8, look at what it says. That Peter feel what the Holy Ghost said unto them. Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done eh, to the impotent man, by what means is made whole, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, not just any other Jesus, because many people, Jesus said, will come in the last days and they will say, I am Christ, I am Christ. He said, shouldn't follow them. He said, this particular Jesus, the one that was born by Virgin Mary, 
and the one that lived the sinless life and the one that preached that great sermon on the man calling people to righteousness the one that died for our sins the one that was buried the one that rose up the third day for justification the one that ascended up into heaven that same jesus of nazareth whom he crucified whom god raised from the dead even by him does this man stand here before you whole and i want to tell you it is by that same name you will stand firm you will stand whole every infirmity every deformity in your life the lord will take it by that name in jesus name this is the stone in verse 11 which was set at not of you builders which is become the hedge of the corner neither is there salvation in any other think about that neither is there salvation in any other take note of that understand this you are going to have salvation you are going to have healing you are going to have holiness you are going to have reconciliation whatever you are going to have redemption you are going to have a passport to get into heaven you are going to have the liberty the chance the opportunity to live with god forever in heaven there's no other name by which that can be done neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved that's the name that's the name that may will work wonders in your life we're looking at chapter 14 of acts acts of the apostles chapter 14 and i'm reading here from verse 8 acts chapter 14 verse 8 it says they and their sat a certain man at lystra impotent in his feet being a cripple from his mother's womb a cripple from his mother's womb who never had one this is another case again you see that's what we're saying and there's some people that you know some maybe a particular religion you know something happened in a particular place at particular time accidentally and because it happened accidentally people thought there was power there that thing happened in maybe chapter three of their religion but then chapter four nothing chapter five nothing and as you go on nothing happens anymore but here look at the progression in the use of the name of jesus here we're now in chapter 14 and the same power in the name of jesus in chapter 3 is still there today in fact the same power in the name of Jesus in the first century is right here with us today in jesus name and so yeah, that's why you want to leave all dead religion behind all the religion that maybe accidentally something happened psychologically something happened but this we're talking of reality we're talking of something permanent something perpetual something it was there in chapter 3 and now we come to chapter we we'll come to chapter 14 we we'll see a similar case of a person that was born a cripple the same heard paul speak who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed said and with a loud voice stand upright on thy feet and what happened he lived and walked just like we read in chapter 3 it is the same power the same authority and the same name and i pray that this name will never die out of your mouth in jesus name and you will never exchange this name for any other thing. You know, there are some people I don't know that can be for them. And they were invited to church and they had the name of Jesus that says, the name of Jesus that heals, the name of Jesus that sanctifies, the name of Jesus that delivers, the name of Jesus that provides all things for us. And then maybe they have a little problem. And because maybe we didn't get to them in time or they couldn't reach us in time, they now introduce some charcoal to them. You know, some... They, they, and they burn lizard and burn cockroach and burn whatever they burn and then they put everything together and then they say let's mark you and after somebody has been in church to allow something like that again god forbid i said god forbid run back here because the name of jesus is still mighty and will do wonders in your life in jesus name you have graduated from all that that you know something happened to you and because you know maybe the house fellowship people are not there in good time and then, even if nobody is there breathe that name out call that name out and that name even you and that name alone you'll be mighty and powerful there in jesus name look at acts of the apostles chapter 16 i'm reading from verse 16 and it came to pass as we went to prayer a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us which brought her masters much gain by so saying the same followed paul and us and cried saying these men are the servants of the most high god which show unto us the way of salvation 
and they should did many days but paul being grieved turned and said to the spirit not to the lady the lady was just a victim was just a captive of the devil a captive of demons controlled by demons but paul the apostle was gripped in his heart and then he spoke to the spirit he said i command thee tell me in whose name in the name of jesus christ you know some of the new converts uh, they make mistakes and they say i pray to the god of pastor so and so uh -uh, it's, uh, it's the name of jesus it's not the name of pastor so and so not the name of uh, brother so and so whose name are we praying the name of jesus so paul said i command thee in the name of jesus christ come out of her and he came out the same hour this is your hour i said this is your hour when we mention the name of Jesus, that same hour, that thing will have to come out. Cannot remain there because the name of Jesus is a wonder walking name. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19. Acts chapter 19. I'm reading here from verse. Let, let's, let's start from verse 11. It says, And God wrought special miracles by the hand of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. It will happen again. I said it will happen again. And then it says, and then certain, but certain vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon, the, upon them to call over, over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus. This one, they were not born again. This one, they were strangers to the commonwealth of Israel. They were strangers to the salvation, salvation of the Lord. They were strangers to the church. They had nothing to do with the apostles, nothing to do with the church. And then they said, well, we'll see how Paul is doing it. He just says, in the name of Jesus, come out. And they thought they could try that. And so they said, we are jolly. We are jolly. Uh, did you hear that word from the lips of Jesus? Adjo. They want to adjure and conjure. You know, some of these people, uh, they, they just hear, go. They don't know what we are going with and where we are going to. And they begin to run. It does not work that way. You must be born again. I said you must be born again. When you are born again, if any man be in Christ, a new creature, all things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. When that change has happened in your life, and you know it is through that name, the name of Jesus, who died for you, who rose from the dead, it is through that name you are saved. That name will be mighty in your mouth. But if you are just copying, if you are just imitating, you know, you are not born again, you say, This is how they do it. You say, We, can, we adjure you by the name by Jesus, whom Paul preaches. There you are, not who saved me not who delivered me, not the one that gave me the authority and the liberty to use the name, but whom Paul preaches. And there were seven sons of one saver, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know. But who are you? Jesus I know. Those demons, they know Jesus. And when you mention the name of Jesus, if it is coming from the right heart and coming from the right mouth, immediately they recognize the authority and the power in that name, they'll come out in Jesus' name. And then they said, Paul, I know. They said, if Paul came here, no, no, not you, not you, not all these three fraps, not the people that are trying to copy Paul in the name of Jesus who Paul preaches, Paul, we know, but who are you? And then they look at what, it, what happened in verse 16. And the man in whom the evil spirit was lived on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and, and wounded. And this was known to all the Jews and the Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus. And fear fell on them all. And the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus was magnified. We well, thank God in our church, that name is magnified. In our local churches, that name is magnified. In your house fellowship, that name will be magnified. In your own home, where you are, where you're coming from, that name will be magnified in Jesus' name. And any, anywhere you find yourself, whatever the challenge and whatever the mountain, this name of Jesus will be magnified in your life in Jesus' name. And many that believe came and confessed and showed their deeds. And many of them also, which use curious as they brought their books together and bunched them before all men. When they saw what happened, when they saw that the name of Jesus is mighty, when they saw that even the evil spirits were confessing Jesus 
we know. And uh, Paul, we know, but who are you? They said, there's no point remaining in that cult. There's no point remaining in occultism. There's no point remaining in any hidden society. We're going to now join a, a, a faith of the Lord. And so they brought all their books together and bunch them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it to be 50,000 pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word of God and prevail. This is an exalted name. And this exalted name will work in our lives in Jesus' name. In Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. I'm reading here from verse 9. Philippians chapter 2. We're looking at verse 9. Wherefore God also has highly exalted him. God has highly exalted him. And when you come, you believe in that name, you are in agreement with the Almighty God because God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. What does that mean? Uh, it's above the name of cancer, above the name of tuberculosis, above the name of blindness, above the name of any sickness, above the name of any mountain in your life. Mention that name. All those other names will vanish away in Jesus' name. That at the name of Jesus, every name should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And this is the name, the name that uh, the Paul, the Peter, the apostle that he used. And then this man became well. You know, at the gate of the temple, they had seen this man as a helpless man, as a hopeless man, because he was born that way. But instead of writing him off as a helpless, hopeless, unfortunate wretch, they saw in him one in whom we can manifest the power of God and we can demonstrate that the name of Jesus is still mighty. What an example for us to when you see people who appear paralyzed and they are impotent and they are hopeless and they are helpless, we don't write anybody off, especially this period of great revival. You will talk to them, you will invite them, you'll bring them along and the Lord will not disappoint your faith in Jesus' name. Think about the whole of the human race, mankind in general. Mankind is poor and hopeless and lame spiritually because we have no standing by birth in the presence of God. We stumble, we fall through life. The very best of persons in the world outside of Christ, a hopeless spiritual cripple. Born that way, each man is a spiritual beggar. If the impotent man lay at the gorgeous gate of a dead religion, you know those people are religious, and every time he was there, the dead religion uh, that uh, was so near but then could not help him, they could do nothing to help or transform him until Peter and John came over there to redirect his attention away from religion unto Jesus Christ the Redeemer, unto Jesus Christ the Savior, unto Jesus Christ the Liberator. And that's what we are saying, that we leave all those dead religions instead of just carrying ourselves or somebody carrying you to the gate of dead religion, the religion that cannot say that we come to Jesus Christ the Savior because when we come to Jesus Christ that name Jesus will settle all the problems in our lives in Jesus name you see the moment he met these people that introduced the name of Jesus to him he was no longer changed to charity he received a miracle. He walked, he lived, and as he praised God and he followed them into the temple, to the place of fellowship and prayer, then the people really saw that his life had been touched. People will see that your life has been touched in Jesus' name. This man who had been carried to the gate of the temple every day, it was a familiar sight. All the people saw him now. They knew him. They could not deny that a great miracle had happened in his life. I believe that the people that see you, I said the people that see you. I said the people that see you. You'll see that a touch of heaven has come upon your life in Jesus' name. Point number two now, the passionate plea in his wonderful name. We're coming back to Acts of the Apostles chapter 3. Acts of the Apostles chapter 3, the passionate plea in his wonderful name. As said, uh, this uh, miracle happened. Uh, you, you know, anytime a miracle happens like this, the same reaction you find, the same response you find with the people that saw the miracle. Look at you from chapter 3 of Acts, verse 11. And as the lame man which was, which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's 
greatly wondering, greatly wondering. You see, it's the same reaction. It's like, I remember, I think uh, it was uh, at the episode, the edition of uh, Miracle Revival for this month, last month, when that, for the first time, that man just got up like this, and people saw, and they ran. And that's just spontaneous. Nobody tells people to run like that. Even when you try to calm them down, everybody stay in your place, stay in your place. I want to see miracle. I want to, and there's something happening in that hall there. I want to be there. That's why they ran there. That's the way it happened then. That's the way it is still happening today, which is telling us that the same power in the early church is in our church. The same glory, the same authority in the name of Jesus in the early church is in this church at present. And I pray that as the rain of miracles, as the rain is falling, it will fall in your house. It will fall in your community. And then the same reaction they had that I want to be there. You know, there are some people that will sit back and say, well, I hear that something is happening there, but this uh, week coming weekend, I don't think I can go now. Uh -uh. Well, it's, everybody should be running there. Vehicle or no vehicle, car or no car, you will be there. I said you will be there. Because uh, this uh, April now is the time of total breakthrough. Total breakthrough. I'm telling you something is happening. I said something is happening. Looks like I'm the only one excited about what is going to happen in the prayer. It is going to happen in Jesus' name. You know, it's not, it's not, it's not a, a temporary breakthrough, a partial breakthrough, a minor breakthrough, a minimized breakthrough. I'm talking about total. Everybody say total. Total breakthrough. And when we say breakthrough, that means every door that is closed, the Lord will break through everything. Every channel that is, that is close to your life, the Lord will break through everything. You know, when there's a breakthrough, you go through, you come through, you pass through, and then you get to that other side, and something will happen to you in Jesus' name. You, you need to be counting the days from now. You say today is, you know, 20, 22nd, isn't it? 20, what? Uh huh. And then you say tomorrow, 23rd, and then you say, the day, hurry up now, hurry up now, because that day, when that day comes, you will never be the same in Jesus' name. And invite other people, tell other people, it is a time of this, this wonderful breakthrough for everyone. And you are going to, the things you found impossible before, they are possible now in Jesus' name. In verse 12, and when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? And why look ye so earnestly on us as though by all power of holiness we have made this man toward the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jesus? Jacob and the God of our fathers has glorified his son Jesus whom ye whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go now look at this Peter before just about two months before this time Peter was so weak he was so anemic spiritually he was so discouraged and he was so fearful he was frightened by little maid that says you must be one of the said me I don't know I don't know what you are talking about I said I think you are a follower of Jesus I don't say that again I am not and then another person came again you must be a follower of Jesus because your speech be real you. Your speech is betraying you. No, I don't know what you are talking about. And on that third person came, he began to curse. If I ever knew Jesus in my life, he, because he didn't have the backbone to stand. But then something has happened. I said something has happened. The day of Pentecost came and that man, all the weakness had been washed away. The Holy, the Holy Ghost fire came upon them and the fire burnt every chaff in his life and then the wind blew. All the, all the chaff and all the weakness, the wind blew everything away and now he stood courageously and boldly. He said, you crucified Jesus, you denied Jesus, you denied the Prince of Life. And he, he really told them, then he said, look at verse, look at verse 14. He said, Pilate wanted to let him go because five different times Pilate said I find no fault in this man look at Luke I find no fault in this man look at John I find no fault in this man even the wife of Pilate came don't have anything to do with the blood of that innocent man because he's an innocent man a sinless man a perfect one and then he said but all the same he denied the holy one and the just and desired Barabbas the murderer to be granted unto you and you killed the prince of life 
That's what praise in the original means, the author of life, the originator of life, the giver of life, the very beginning of life. He said, that's the one you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses, and his name through faith in his name has made this man strong. He said, it's not our power. It's not our holiness. It's the name of Jesus. It is faith in that name that makes this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him has given this man this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And now he, he, wanted to, he wasn't just say, preaching to condemn them. You know, sometimes so we mention, you know, you crucified the Lord. You've done this, you've uh, done this. You have dishonored the name of the Lord. Uh -huh, the preacher is condemning me. Not condemnation. It is to make them realize what they have done so they can turn around and then come to the Lord. That's why he said in verse 17, And now, brethren, I watch that she did it through ignorance. Uh, through ignorance, she did it as did also your rulers. And uh, why did he say they did it through ignorance? Because the didn't was the Messiah. They didn't know it was a Christ. They just saw it was a religious man. It was a miracle worker. But it's more than that. And because they didn't know the real fact that this is the Christ, the Messiah, and God of very God, who became man and dwelt among us. That's why I said, you did it with, through ignorance. Now, for the children of Israel, what does that mean? What does that mean? You kill somebody, but you didn't do it deliberately. You did it through ignorance. Immediately, they remember the cities of refuge. Because in the land of Israel, if somebody killed another person without, without knowing that this is what was going to happen, immediately, while the high priest was still alive, he would run to the city of refuge. And when they heard what Peter said, they had already accused them. You denied him, you destroyed him, you killed him, you put him to death. It's okay now. It means that we have committed the greatest crime. We have committed the unpardonable sin. Immediately, he said, the city of refuge is open for you. Because you did that through ignorance. Ignorance. And the same thing the Lord is telling us, all the things we did before, we didn't know that the death of the sins we committed. We didn't know the ramifications or the consequence of the sins we committed. That's why the gate of the city of refuge is open for every one of us. Now run into Christ and then your sins will be forgiven in Jesus' name. Then he says in verse 18, but those things which God before assured by the mouth of all these prophets that Christ should suffer so uh, and he has so fulfilled. It tells them that it is not by accident. All those things actually were predicted in Scripture, prophesied in Scripture. Look at Luke chapter 24. It was saying that everything that happened to Jesus was not accidental. It was act as the Scriptures had predicted and prophesied. Luke chapter 24, I'm reading from verse 26. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things? and to enter into his glory and beginning at moses and all the prophets he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself the things concerning himself look at verse 44 in verse 44 it says and he said unto them these are the words which i speak unto you while i was yet with you that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of moses and in this and and in the in the prophets and in the psalms concerning me then open he the understanding that they might understand the scriptures i pray you'll understand the scripture here is the same thing that paul the apostle was telling the people in first corinthians chapter 2 verse 8 first corinthians chapter 2 verse 8 they killed the prince of glory they denied the holy one and the just one but it was their spiritual darkness and spiritual ignorance that made them to do that look at this in first corinthians chapter 2 verse 8 which none of the princes of this world knew they didn't know they didn't know for had they known it they would not have crucified the lord of glory had they known that he was a savior he was a redeemer had they known that he was a messiah he was a christ the very son of god they would not have crucified the, the lord of glory and so they did it in ignorance but then even though they did it in ignorance now Jesus Christ has died and anyone that believes in him will now be saved. Salvation is now available through that death of Jesus Christ. Look at John chapter 1 verse 12. John chapter 1 verse 12. It tells us in John chapter 1 verse 12, it says, but as many as received him to them, he gave them, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. 
Jesus Christ has died for you. He is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. As many as received him, if you will not receive him, not receive it, it is not religion. It's not just that I joined the church. More than that, it's not that I believe the doctrine. More than that, as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on what? On his name, on his name. As you believe today, something wonderful will happen in your life. First John chapter 5, First John chapter 5, we're reading from verse 11. First John chapter 5, and we're reading from verse 11. And this is the record that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his son. You have the son of God, you have life. You don't have the son, you have darkness. You have death, you have spiritual death. And eternal death, eternal doom was the final end. But it says, this is the record that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. It's not in religion. It's not in, I do this, I don't do this, I do this, I don't do this. But he's talking about what Jesus himself, what he gives. He gives us eternal life. And then in verse 12, he that has the son has life. He that has the son has life. How do you have the son? You turn away from your sin and then you turn to Jesus Christ as Savior. And you say, I receive him. I receive him. That's why he said, behold, I stand at the door of your heart and I'm knocking. If anyone hears my voice and he opens the door, I will come in. And when he comes in, when you have the Son, you have life. He that has the Son has life. He that has not the Son of God has not life. If he doesn't have life, what does he have? He has a death, he has desolation, he has destruction, he has doom, he has, he has a damnation, he has eternal punishment. He that has not the Son of God has not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that she may know, and that she may have, and that she have eternal life, and that she believe on the name of the Son of God. And so if you are asking, if you are not born again yet, you are saying, how can I have this life? How can I have this redemption? How can I have this salvation? How can I know that this eternal life is mine, that if I die here on earth, I will go to heaven? Look at this in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16, verse 31. Acts chapter 16, we're looking at verse 31, and they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thine house. And thou shalt be saved and thine house. So simple, so simple. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And then your family will be saved as they believe with you in Jesus' name. Let's come to chapter 3 of Acts. Acts of the Apostles chapter 3. As um, he made the plea before them. He was now going to bring a kind of climax, a conclusion to what he was telling them. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 19. Acts of the Apostles chapter 3. And we're looking at it from verse 19. It says in verse 19, Repent ye therefore. You killed the Lord. Repent ye therefore. You denied the Holy One. Repent ye therefore. You did this in ignorance. But now that you know that this is what you have done, if you persist in this, it means then you are rigid in your sin. You are rigid in your crime. You are rigid in your evil. But now you need to repent. Now that I have told you, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Let's stop there for a moment. He said, the Lord is waiting for you. He wants to blot out your sin. Even the remembrance of the sins you have committed, all the other sins you have committed, and then the climax, the greatest, the highest, that the very prince of life, you destroy the prince of life, the originator of life, the giver of life, and the author of life. You killed him and rejected him, but there's still a way. There's still a way. You can still come out of that, and life can come into you. That's why I said, repent. Repent ye therefore, and be converted. Repentance and conversion. Repentance and conversion. Repentance comes before conversion. Conversion comes after repentance. It is wonderful that uh, Peter was not carried away with the miracle that happened because he remembered now what the Lord Jesus Christ had done when he was here on earth. Look at this. Look at what Jesus, how Jesus preached. We're looking at Mark. Mark chapter 1. And I'm reading from verse 14 and verse 15 now. After that, John was put in prison. Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled. 
the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. That's how Jesus preached. And thank God that Peter remembered that that is the message he was to preach. He said, repent ye therefore. What you can Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13. And I'm reading here from verse 3. The very words of Jesus Christ. He said, I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Look at verse 5. I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall not likewise perish. There are some people when a miracle happens, they forget all that Jesus Christ has told us to do. As the people run together, they are shouting, they are excited. This has happened, what a great thing. They forget that that goodness of God is to lead us unto repentance. That it is not just miracle in isolation, healing in isolation, deliverance in isolation. That that goodness of God is to lead us unto, lead us unto what? Unto repentance, Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2, I'm reading to you from verse 4. In Romans chapter 2, we're looking at verse 4. It tells us here in Romans chapter 2, verse 4, it says, Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. Peter remembered that. He said, This miracle is not just an isolation. God has done this. This is a great thing, a wonderful thing. But this is to lead us and to lead everyone to repentance. He remembered that Jesus Christ had told them before he left, just before he ascended into heaven, that the message of repentance is what they want to preach. Luke chapter 24. I'm reading from verse 46 and verse 47. Luke chapter 24, and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behoved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name. In his name, not only healing in his name, miracle in his name, moving mountains in his name, casting out devils in his name, that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name. That's the reason you find them in the Acts of the Apostles. They emphasize that which the Lord himself had emphasized. Acts of the Apostles chapter 5. Acts chapter 5, reading from verse 30 and verse 31. It says, The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Can you do you see that after Peter received the Holy Ghost, the fear that was there before, the cringing that was there before, and covering the mouth before you could talk, that was there, all that was gone boldness, authority, conviction, courage came upon him. And then he said, ye slew him, and you hung him on the tree. Him as God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior and to give, for to give repentance, repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sin. They never forgot that Jesus had preached repentance, and that's what they did. They didn't allow the miracle to just carry them away. We're looking at chapter 17, chapter 17, verse 13. Chapter 17, verse 30. There are some people that will say, well, repentance no more necessary now because, you know, only believe on the Lord Jesus. I just raise up your hand and then accept Jesus as personal Savior. About all the sins I committed before, God does not see your sin. He doesn't look at your sin. That's what they tell them. They say, just, just raise up your hand. That's all. But the, in the Bible, in the New Testament, it's repent, repent. And I pray that we'll keep to the Bible in Jesus' name. Give me a good day. Amen. Acts chapter 17, verse 30. And in times of this ignorance, God went out. You remember, I told them, you did this in ignorance. That doesn't mean you're not repent. Okay, I didn't know since I didn't know I was ignorant. That, you're not going to remain ignorant forever. Now you know. That's why it said, the times of this ignorance, God went out. But now commandeth how many people? Tell me out loud. All men everywhere to repent because he has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he has ordained, whereof he has given assurance unto all men in that he has raised him from the dead. He raised him from the dead so that we will, will repent of our sins, we'll repent of the evil things that we have done. And then Paul the apostle came later. Look at now what's happening. Acts chapter 20, verse 20 and verse 21. Acts chapter 20, 
verse 20 and verse 21. It says, and how I kept nothing back that was profitable unto you, and I've showed you and I've taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Not just faith, not just faith, repentance toward God. Everything God condemns that you had been doing, you now know that God condemns them and you turn away from them, repent towards God and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 26, in verse 26, wherefore I take you to record this day that I appear from the blood of all men. If we don't tell them about repentance, tell them to turn, tell them to change, tell them to get rid of all those evil things they were doing before and come to the Lord and walk in the light. If we don't tell them, we'll be guilty of their blood. But because Paul the apostle had told them, that's why he said, I'm now pure from the blood of all men, for I've not shown to declare unto you all the counsel of God. I pray that we too will declare the whole counsel of God in Jesus' name. Uh, there's something interesting here. Jesus Christ went to heaven. And then when he was uh, sent a message from heaven, do you know what message he sent from heaven? Look at Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. So that the church will not forget that that message of repentance, Jesus preached it on earth. The apostles revealed that message. They preached it here on earth in the first century. And then when Jesus went to heaven and he sent the message down from heaven, he still preached that message of repentance, which is telling you that now if Jesus were to come here today to preach to you, if you're still in your sin or if you're a backslider, or if you are not a backslider, but you are doing things that they, they, they're a little bit shady. It's not how you should do. God wants you to walk in newness of life and then in a perfect life, spotless life. But you are doing shady things. He's calling you to repentance. Revelation chapter 2, I read from verse 4. Revelation chapter 2 verse 4, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast led thy first love. These were church people, members of the church, and leaders in the church. He said, you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from when thou art fallen, and repent. You see that? That's the message of Christ, preaching to us, telling us, reminding us, even from his throne of glory in heaven. He said, repent. I'm looking at it now from verse 15. It says, so as thou also them that have the doctrines of the Nicolaitans, which things I hate. He talks to another church and I said, in this church, they're doing things which I hate. Do you know there are things that Jesus hates? There are doctrines that Jesus hates. There are appearances that Jesus hates. There are attitudes that Jesus hates. There's a kind of interaction, association that Jesus hates. And there's a kind of, uh, kind of utterances that Jesus hates. And Jesus says here, yeah, you have the people that the doctrine of the incoditans, which things I hate. Look at verse 16. Repent, or else I will come to thee quickly and fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Jesus had gone to heaven, and from heaven was still sounding this thunderous message of repentance to the people. He said, repent. I come to chapter, this chapter 2. I'm looking at verse 20, notwithstanding. I have a few things against thee, because that sufferest not permitted to allow that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess. The church did not call her prophetess. She called herself a prophetess. The church did not appoint her, but she appointed herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants, instead of leading people to righteousness and to justification, to holiness, and leading people on the way to heaven, these self styled and self acclaimed the prophetess, was teaching them and seducing them to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. You see, Jesus read in heaven and still sounded the message of repentance. And Peter was falling after the first steps of Jesus Christ, repent ye therefore and be converted, that the times of refreshing God may blot out your sins, and times of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord. It says in verse 21, I give her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, a bed of affliction, a bed of suffering, a bed of damnation, a bed of eternal condemnation. And them that 
commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds, except they repent of their deeds. The Lord is still challenging everyone. If there's any sin in your life, any sin in your hand, any sin in your house, any sin in your place of work that you are taking part in, the Lord is saying, look at how powerful the name of Jesus is, and look at how mighty the name of Jesus is, and the goodness of the Lord, and the answer to prayer is to lead us to repentance. If God can do that for me, if God can do this today, and I see the manifestation of the power of his name, there's just one thing for me to do. Repent and be converted. Look at verse 20, 23, and I will kill her children with death. Her converts, the people that, you know, support her, they support Jezebel, they support that one that call herself prophetess, and all the churches shall know that I am he, which searches the reins of the hearts, and I will give to everyone a According to your works. I pray that we will hear the message of the word and we will repent before it is late in Jesus' name. Look at chapter 3, verse 1. We're looking at chapter 3, and we're looking at it now from verse 1. Unto the angel of the church is said is right. These things is he that has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest, but are not dead. Be watchful and strengthen those things which remain and are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. God is examining our ministry. He's examining our work. He's examining our influence on the church. He's examining our ministry in the church. You know, activities there, program there, this one there. And the Lord said, I know you're active. I know you're doing this and that. But people are not getting saved. People, they are getting here, but are they getting saved? Are they having new lives in Christ? Is there holiness in their lives? I've not found your work perfect before God. Remember. But therefore, how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. This is Christ telling the church that even when we're doing some things that appear good, you have a name that you live, but you are dead. But now you need to repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon, upon thee. Verse 5 He that overcometh, thank God, I'm going to be an overcomer. I said, I'm going to be an overcomer. You know, when you repent and you turn away from anything that brings, uh, you know, the wrath of God, the judgment of God, when you repent of those things, then the Lord will have favor, mercy upon us. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Uh, let's come back to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3. Uh, Peter had said, repent ye therefore and be converted, be converted. After revealing the great evil of, the sin, of their sins to them, they were called to repentance for their, uh, for, for their repentance to be meaningful and genuine and acceptable. There must be a definite change of mind concerning the sins they have committed. Not rather than number two, there must be a definite practical turning away from their sins. Number three, a decisive separation from the sinners with whom they committed all those sins in the past. If you still, you know, you committed sins, uh, you know, with some uh, people, maybe you stole together, adultery, you have fornication together, and then you still remain in friendship, fellowship with them. You, you are not really repented. You excuse them, you cover them, you love them, you like them. That's no repentance. It says there must be a practical turning away from the sins and a definite separation from those sinners with whom you committed those sins. A hatred for all the sins and a wholehearted faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, Christ has commanded that repentance be preached in his name by his authority as he preached it following his example. And then we emphasize conversion, change, total change, transformation of life, bringing forth the fruit of repentance that is definite proof and evidence of real salvation and repentance. When he said, Repent ye therefore, that your sins may be blotted out. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, then he talks about the restitution, restoration of all things as has been promised after genuine repentance everything we have lost when there's repentance everything you have lost there'll be a restoration i said there'll be a restoration and if you have said i about this in my life i about this in my life I about this in my life that thing is coming back 
everything you lost because once repentance is there, change of life is there. The Lord, the Lord's favor and mercy will come upon you once again in Jesus' name. Look at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3. I'm going to read from verse 19. I'll repent you therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing. That word in Rajan, the time of rest, the time of peace shall come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the time of the restoration of all things. What he's talking about here is that the nation of Israel, they were expecting a time of peace, a time of joy, a time of renewal, a time when there will be roses in the desert, a time when all the deserts will bloom because of the life coming to them. That's what the people were expecting, but it was connected with the coming of the Messiah, but they rejected the Messiah, and therefore there was spiritual darkness. And then Peter said, if there is national repentance, that time will come because Jesus will bring that time. But if national repentance has not come, individual repentance now. When you repent as an individual or as a family or as a local church, that time of refreshing will come upon your life. It says, which God has spoken of by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Then he now mentions the greatest of the prophets and the first of the prophets in the Old Testament. For Moses truly said unto, our fa unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. He said, you missed the chance when Jesus came. But now the chance is there once again. Because this is the Lord Jesus Christ that Moses spoke about. Not only Moses and shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet that is referring to the Lord Jesus Christ shall be destroyed from among the people. This is still holding true today. Anyone that will not hear Jesus on the final day, the judgment will come and there will be destruction, damnation upon that individual. I pray that you will not wait for that day. I said you will not wait for that day. This is the best time and the best day to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. In fact, you said it's not only Moses, but you said ye and all the prophets from Samuel and those that followed after as many as have spoken have likewise foretold of these days ye are the children of these of the prophets and of the covenant which god made with our fathers saying unto abraham and in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed all the kindreds of the earth be blessed the blessing has now come to your tongue I say it has come to your turn. And the moment you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, all the blessings that provided on the cross of Calvary, all those blessings will be yours in Jesus' name. Unto you first God, having raised up his son, Jesus sent him to bless you in turning away how many people? Tell me out loud. Every one of you from his iniquity. And when he turns you away from iniquity, a lot of things will happen in your life. Number one, there will be remission. Remission of your sin. That is, he'll just remove your sins completely. He'll blot them out. And it, there'll be no remembrance of them anymore. That you just say, Lord, I'm sorry for this, for this, for this. The ones I remember, the ones I can't remember. Oh, Lord, pardon me. I believe that Jesus died for me. His blood will so cleanse you. He'll blot everything. That's remission there will be no remembrance of your sins anymore in Jesus' name. Number two, regeneration. Regeneration is like he will renew you. It's like generate, generator, regeneration. He will recreate you once again. You will be a new creature in the hands of the Lord in Jesus' name. Number three, there will be reconciliation. There will be a wall of partition between you and the Almighty God. But repentance and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ will break down that wall of partition. You will be a child of God. He will be your father. You are reconciled together you feel you feel his love you sense his love you know his love because you are reconciled together number four there's redemption you are redeemed from the curse of the law and from all the punishment that you have come upon your life total redemption will be yours in jesus name number five there'll be a refreshing everything will just refresh your life dryness will vanish away the weariness will vanish away all the tiredness will vanish there'll be new life that will come to you there's a refreshing from heaven it can happen tonight 
I say it can happen tonight. Number six, there's resurrection. Resurrection. This spiritual resurrection that he raises you up with the Lord Jesus Christ and he makes you to sit together in heavenly places with Jesus Christ. And then number seven, there is righteousness. Righteousness. And you will be righteous in Jesus' name. Look at Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. I'm reading from verses 9 and 10. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Confess Jesus as your Lord. Confess Jesus as your Savior. He died for me. It was for me he shed his blood. I own him now as the controller of my life, director of my life, and the Lord of my life. That if thou shalt confess Jesus with thy mouth as Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Then he says, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Salvation and everything that comes with salvation can be yours right now. I say it can be yours right now. Why don't you rise up and talk to the Lord? Remember, today we are spoken about this wonder-walking name, this worthy name, this wonderful name, the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, here am I. Lord, here am I. I believe. I believe. I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You tell the Lord, any sin in your life, any evil in your hand, any crime there, the Lord is expecting that you repent. Repent ye therefore and be converted. And then all these good, good things will come upon your life. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord. Tell the Lord. Tell the Lord. If you don't repent, if you die in sin, that will mean hell fire straight. But as you repent, you call upon the Lord. You say, Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. Sorrow for sin. So sin will not be your ruin. Yes, the name of Jesus is mighty. The name of Jesus is powerful. But then his goodness leads us to repentance. His miracles lead us to repentance. His mercy leads us to repentance. And without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. That's the one to call upon the name of the Lord. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever, whosoever, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You see those uh, believers in uh, Revelation? They left their first love. But the Lord said, remember what you receive. Remember who you are, what you were. How you loved the Lord, how you served the Lord. How you lived a righteous life, a holy life. How you hated sin in the past. But now you have left that first love and that conviction, that consecration, that courage, fighting against sin, winning against sin. He says, repent ye therefore, repent, repent. He said, if you don't repent, I'll come to you like as a thief in the night. I remove the candlestick out of his place except you repent. The other church, he told that church, you are active. You are doing this and that, many, many works, many activities, many programs. But you have them there that hold false doctrine, wrong doctrine. Let them repent. If they don't repent, and they continue holding the doctrine which I hate, I'm going to come against them with judgment. Repent. And then you know he talks about the one that calls herself a prophetess, Jezebel. Seducing members of the church to commit fornication and adultery. And the pastor was so weak. Could not challenge her. Could not remove her from that self acclaimed title, prophetess. And the Lord said, Repent. Otherwise, I'll come with the fire of judgment. I'll kill her. Kill her children, her converts, and bring judgment upon that indulgent pastor. 
except you all repent. The Lord calls us to repentance. Remember the church, you have a name that you live, but you are dead. Remember how you first received. Remember that holiness in the early church, early part of the church. Say, follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Repent. He calls us to repentance. Then when he says, repent and be converted, then he said, your sins will be blotted out when you repent. If you keep on rejoicing in your sin, your sins will not be blotted out. If you keep on boasting and bragging your sin, your sins will not be blotted out. If you keep on covering up your sin and continuing it, then your sins will not be blotted out. But when you repent, when you turn away, when there's a change of heart, a change of life, a hatred for sin, a separation from those sin partners, then the sins will be blotted out. A time of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord. A time of renewal, a time of revival, a time of redemption, a time of restoration will come from the very presence of the Lord. And then you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll be restored, you'll be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, grace will be made available, abundant to your life, you'll never be the same again. Don't allow any sin to remain there before you go. Settle it with the Lord. Repent. There'll be regeneration. Repent. There'll be reconciliation. Repent. There'll be redemption. Repent. There'll be righteousness. Repent. And then when the rapture takes place, there will be a part of those who will go with the Lord and be in heaven forever to spend eternity with him. Repent.